This is KGW News at Sunrise. This morning on Sunrise, a deadly dog attack in southeast Portland claims the life of a six-year-old boy who was getting ready to go to school yesterday morning. We'll tell you exactly what happened and whether or not the owner of those dogs will face charges. Plus. Here he goes. The road's going. Wow. Boom! <laughs> Dropping the boom. Look at that. That is just a glimpse of one of the impacts of the absolute washout that we've seen over the last 24 hours. Lots of rain. We'll walk you through what we've seen and when it is expected to end. Completely different picture this morning in Lake Oswego. This is the picture that Eric Patterson, our Sunrise photographer, is bringing us. Uh, this is the corner of Childs Road and Indian Springs Road in Lake Oswego. And the family behind that house clearly gets into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> they call it their very own winter wonderland there in Lake Oswego. We're gonna have more, yeah, I know, holy cow, are you right? <laughs> yes. Imagine, amazing, imagine that PGE bill. I at the end of the summer. Oh, dang, <laughs> you're right. Christmas vacation, right. but he sips the light, they gotta turn on the extra reactor, right? Yeah, we'll have more shots from that home in Lake Oswego wow. coming up a little bit later, but uh, Christine, you hit on the big story this morning. It is still the yeah. weather. Look who's back. I Rodney know. Hill. We, uh, Chris called me, said, Rod, it's pretty busy around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and before we get to all that weather and all the headlines, we really, really quickly want to give you a heads up on a number of school districts out on the coast. The rain, the flooding having an impact there. You can see those on your screen where uh, the school is or schools are closed rather in Washington Yale Elementary School will be opening two hours late today that is in the Woodland School District that delay could go longer depending on conditions uh, we'll have more information available on each district's website okay Rod I know you've got a ton to talk about yeah thank you by the way in terms of river flooding Tillamook is kind of the epicenter Tillamook County you got the Nahalem you got the trash you got the Wilson all above flood stage at this hour all under of course a flood warning so a especially in Tillamook County, have your eyes open for high water spots. And of course, have your eyes open for high water spots just about anywhere as the steady rain continues to come. Now, today is the day that later on, we will start to see the rain break up and we'll see some improvement, but that's not until later today. So this morning, as you step outside, it's the same absolute steady rain that we've had for over 24 hours at this point. You can see the raindrops on the Rose City camera. It's still crazy mild. We're not 60, but we're 56 temperatures today. However, will hold steady to actually going down. Steady rain this morning. Most of it is still steady rain at noon. And then at some point this afternoon, timing is unclear to me, but at some point this afternoon, the rain will start to at least break up out of the steady flow. Will be about 51 degrees. Snow levels tonight finally lower to about 3,000 feet. Here's Chris McGinnis. It's reasonable to think all that rain may be responsible for some of the downed trees being reported on 99W, just north of the Newburgh area right now. Southbound lanes blocked about two miles north of Newburgh and also just getting a down tree report uh, just north of Newburgh on Highway 219 near Bell Road. All right, you see the crash markers out on the sunset. A number of fender benders reported just now. Here's the latest West Bend Highway 26. Our camera zoomed in, so I don't think we can see anything here, but uh, this is Highway 26 westbound at Murray Boulevard. So traffic is a little bunched up around that, obviously. And to the point about the water logged freeways, there you go, guys. Lots of road spray out there once again this morning. We'll keep you posted. All right, we'll have more from Chris and Rod coming up here shortly, but still this morning, the big concerns because of all this weather remains flooding, road closures and landslides. Yeah, and we've seen all of those things already. Let's walk you through what's happened in just the last 24 hours. We'll start out on the coast. This is video from last night of the Wilson River in Tillamook County. The high water still has Highway 6 closed this morning, heading into Tillamook. We talked to people living at a nearby RV park who say conditions changed quickly. Right about the base of the tree line when I left this morning, two hours time, it's boom, it's up. So we're just trying to I didn't expect for it to rise this quickly. Meanwhile, part of Highway 101 in Seaside is also still closed this morning because of flooding. ODOT says there is no local detour. The agency, though, will send out an update when it's safe to travel through that area. Some pretty dramatic video now coming out of the Waukiakum County area of Southwest Washington. This is near Roseburg, Washington. The rising floodwaters there of the Grays River led to this. A woman got stuck in her Jeep. You're gonna see in just a second here, right there, she actually had to climb on top of her Jeep and wait for that helicopter crew to come and rescue her. Uh, they say that the, the water just rose too fast for her to keep up with. The river literally sweeping her away in her Jeep. So again, she climbed onto the roof, waited until the Coast Guard helicopter arrived from Astoria. That crew, that same crew, also had to rescue four other people in that same area 
who were also stranded by floodwaters. Here it goes. The road's going. Boom! Wow, that is SR 503 near Cougar, Washington. Look at that huge chunk just collapsing away. That's where transportation officials will be this morning to assess all that damage. They say water running underneath the road there started to erode the pavement, causing a big chunk of it to just fall away. Here's another issue we're covering this morning. A landslide in Vancouver is blocking some of the train tracks, and that's disrupting Amtrak service right now between Portland and Seattle. We talked to passengers yesterday who still made it to Portland last night. They just had to go about it in a different way. I was pretty much on time for the most part. I think I'm about 30 minutes late, and it was a comfortable ride and worked out okay. Yeah, eventually I had to get on a bus to finish that trip to Portland. Service is expected to resume by tomorrow morning, so still not today. By the way, trains running between Portland and Eugene are not affected by this. We'll have more weather coverage, of course, coming up, more traffic coverage as well as we continue to roll on through sunrise. You can also find the latest updates on all of the weather around the area at KGW.com. Portland police are investigating after a car hit and killed a pedestrian in northeast Portland. It happened on 122nd Avenue near Gleason just before 10 o'clock last night. Police found the person dead at the scene. We don't know the name of the person who was killed and it's not really clear if the driver stayed at the scene. But Portland police is now asking anyone who saw what happened to call its tip line. We have a completely terrible story to report this morning about a six year old boy who died yesterday in southeast Portland after he was mauled by two large dogs. Portland police say it happened yesterday at a home near Northeast 112th Avenue and uh, Schooler Street. They say the child's grandmother dropped him off at the home of a family friend who takes the child to school every day. We're told that the dogs were in the garage and when the boy opened up the door, that's when he was attacked. And I see the owner and I ask uh, Billy what's going on and he said, uh, oh, this is not good morning for me. And he's a uh, really shock, really shocked. He's a uh, shaking. Police say the owner of the dogs did everything she could to stop the attack and that when she answered the door, she was covered in blood from her injuries. She was treated at a local hospital. The dogs are now in the custody of Multnomah County Animal Services and it's too soon to say whether or not the owner will face criminal charges. Now to an update on the off-duty pilot accused of trying to bring down an Alaska Airlines flight over Oregon. He will no longer face attempted murder charges. Instead, a Multnomah County grand jury indicted Joseph Emerson on less serious charges, which means he could be released from jail this week. So the new charges include endangering an aircraft and 83 counts of recklessly endangering another person. In late October, investigators say Emerson, who was off-duty at the time, tried to cut the plane engines while riding in the cockpit traveling from Everett to San Francisco then had to be restrained while the plane had to make an emergency landing in Portland. Emerson's lawyers say he had no criminal intent and thought he was dreaming. Well, this is going to be a big week for Ducks quarterback Bo Nix. Saturday, he will be one of the finalists in New York City when the Heisman Trophy winner is announced this year. But he already received a big reward from the Pac-12. Nix was named the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. He's the fourth Duck to win that award. He leads the nation in pass completion percentage at 77.2%. That's off the charts. <laughs> So is this number. He threw 40 touchdown passes, averaging nearly 320 yards a game. Uh, again, the big award could come this Saturday. Nick's one of the finalists for the Heisman Trophy. The big award is going to be his paycheck. He's going to get oh, yeah. next year. NFL, NFL salary. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Rod. All right, real quick. Still under flood warnings this morning. Uh, the Cowlitz River is right near flood stage, uh, but slightly above. That's up in Kelso. You've got the Grays River that Drew already mentioned during the newscast in Wakaiakum County. You've got the Trass River in Tillamook is now actually just below flood stage. That's going down, but still above the Nahalem and the uh, Wilson in Tillamook County and the Sletch River down in Lincoln County. Those are the main rivers flooding at this time. Yes. Welcome back from your four-day weekend. Yeah. <laughs> what a welcome. Did you read that? You can. <laughs>
Here's a look, my handwriting is a mess. Here's a look at some water totals for you. So the Willapa Hills, this is one reason why the Grays River is flooding. These numbers are since last Friday, December 1st. 13.77, that's not a bucket, that's a trash can receptacle, right? Tillamook, eight to nine inches in the county. The coast range, when you get up in elevation, 10 to 13, going back to last Friday. Portland, maybe not as much as you think, actually. 4.23. And Salem, maybe not as much as you think, 3.51. So far, I tell you what we have avoided. That was a big concern. We've avoided rivers like the Clackamas and the Sandy getting above flood stage because we had concern over that 30 inches of snow up on the Cascades melting, which it has, and adding runoff. But so far, those rivers have stayed in their banks. So terrific news there. All right, big picture. There are breaks out here in the Pacific. There's a break down to our south. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel, as the saying goes. But for right now, it's the same sloppy, absolute, steady, rainy mess that we had yesterday. We are seeing some breaks in Astoria. And later today, we're going to see breaks in the rain come up from the south. So here's the steady rain on the radar. You can't avoid it anywhere up and down the I-5 corridor. It's really warm out there again. 55 in Portland. 55 in Salem. 50 in the Dalles. It's 50 in Pendleton, 52, 52 in John A. Burns, the one chilly spot at 35. Okay, what's up with the rain? Well, here we are, 9.30 this morning. Again, we're seeing breaks come into the north coast. We're seeing breaks later today come up from the south. Now, if this is correct, it's still steady rain from Salem, Portland, up into Longview at 2 o'clock. At some point this afternoon, and I'm not sure about the timing, but at some point, this steady rain flow will go poof. It will break up. There will still be some rain around, but the steady stuff will be gone. And you'll notice that if you're checking the radar on your phones. This shows that at 430, hopefully it's a little bit sooner than that. And what's that color? That snow returning to the Cascades. The snow level has been 8,000 feet, even higher. Later today, it comes down to four. Tonight into tomorrow, the snow level is back down to 3,000 feet. We get snow over the Cascade Passes again starting tomorrow. Here we are, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Now, tomorrow there's still rain, but it's not connected with what's going on right now. See the bright colors? There could actually be some rumbles of thunder around the area tomorrow with the rainy areas. So just what's going to come yet today, good grief, could be another three quarters of an inch or so in Salem, and good grief, could be another half of an inch or so falling here in Portland. Not much wind today, southwest 5 to 15. Portland and southwest Washington, similar numbers generally holding in the mid-50s. The rain breaking up from south to north and from west to east across our area. Uh, all right, so we still have rain at times Thursday. Friday is a pretty dry day with a shower chance. Saturday could be another washout. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, there's some models that say we go dry, but not all of them. So for now, we'll hold on to a shower chance, and that is your forecast. Okay, thank you so much, Rod.